Hello, and thank you for tuning in to this special report. I'm Glenn Martin, the host of Prescott Talks, working for Prescott E! News. And today we're going to be talking about the COVID virus, COVID-19 virus, that uh, so many, that's on so many of our, our minds. Um, today I'm joined by Steve Everett with the County Health Department mm -hmm. and Dr. Ascari from Thumb Butte Medical. And we're going to discuss and ask some of the questions that are out there. To be honest with you, I watched uh, the news yesterday and I uh, observed on Facebook so many questions out there and I felt, I contacted our editor in chief and said, we need to get some information out there for some of the folks uh, who are asking these questions and I couldn't think of two better people and experts in the field. So, you know, Steve, um, my life has changed a lot because mm -hmm. of this. I mean, it was just in the, within the last couple of days. Yesterday, I went to Costco to get gas and I didn't wait, mm -hmm. but I saw people waiting for toilet paper. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, wow. things are really starting to go crazy. And uh, what, what, what can we do to, uh, to help our community and understand uh, that the seriousness of this virus and how um, we can uh, live our daily lives and not mm -hmm. be in panic and fear? Yes, panic is something you definitely do not want to do because that's even more contagious than COVID. Mm -hmm. but you start seeing one person loading up on uh, toilet paper, then you start thinking, why is he doing that? Maybe I should do it too. And then other people see you doing it and it escalates. Yeah. What I've been recommending is uh, we want people to have a two week supply of food as um, backup and just to be safe. Just when you go shopping, instead of buying seven days of groceries, buy 10. Mm -hmm. The following week, do the same thing. There's your two weeks. Yeah. Gotcha. And the stock, everyone, the stock will be able to keep up and everyone will be able to get what they need. So there's shortages going on right now. But, yes. you know, I worked in the grocery business and I know for a fact that's going to be a very temporary thing. Would yes. you agree? Um, you know, sometimes we get caught off guard on wants and needs from our public. Mm -hmm. But... Um, uh, you know, for the folks that are watching us right now, uh, give us a give us a few days, and I think the, the grocery stores will be filled back. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Doctor Ascari, um, one of the things that as a question out there was, uh, is COVID nineteen a flu or is it, it uh, its own identity? Its own identity, and I I have to reassure people in Yavapai County that. Uh, we're blessed in a way that we have no reported case as of today, as of this morning. And um, if, uh, there are three different uh, elements here. Coronavirus, common cold, and flu. Mm -hmm. And they all uh, pre present with different signs and symptoms. Coronavirus comes with fever, dry cough, noticeable sh shortness of breath, severe shortness of breath, and it appears actually the symptoms started actually two to 14 days after they cut it. Mm -hmm. However, a common cold, a present with sore throat, scratchy throat, and a little cough, runny nose, uh, dry eyes or runny eyes, and head pressure type of like uh, symptoms. While flu is like more a muscle ache, high fever, um, and then uh, 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 what I would say, uh, chills, dry cough, they don't produce any flames or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So those are the main three different, di to differentiate between these three elements. Gotcha. And, and when we talk about the symptoms, uh, what would we do if we did exhibit any of those symptoms? In other words, um, I'm at home, I'm starting to get a fever, I'm having a cough. Do I go to an ER? Do I call the doctor? Do I call the health department? What, what advice would you give the public that if you do exhibit any of these symptoms, where do we go and what do we do? Okay, well, with, uh, if you're just having mild symptoms, uh, don't go to the emergency room. Uh, call your doctor and he will advise you whether to come in. If he thinks it's just a regular flu, he may just have you stay home since the symptoms aren't bad. There's no cure for flu, so it's mainly just uh, relieving your symptoms. And what would you advise, Doctor? Uh, I advise people to stay home, and then we, I just, we just started hiring about 10 physicians at our clinic. 
So we would go to the patients and do house call for them from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then, um, so we're on the field, go seeing patient and take care of them rather than people. Even if you get one case, God forbid, or two case coming to uh, an office where 50, 60 people sitting, or any uh, multi-specialty clinic, large clinics or emergency room, uh, it would be a tragedy. So mm -hmm. I advise people stay home, call us, we were available for you, we come to see you at your house, rather you guys come to see us within at least next two weeks mm -hmm. until we see where we're going, just which to, direction we're going. Just to make sure I understand, you guys are doing house calls yes. at Thumb Butte. Yes. So uh, we'll make sure we get the telephone number up for that. Oh, okay. So um, call that number and we have dispatchers and then we have doctors in Prescott Valley, Chino Valley, Dewey Humboldt, Prescott mainly, at least about 10 physicians available to cover the people when from 7 a.m. till uh, 9 or 10 p.m. will be available to help them out rather than they come to us. One of the things I, I, I believe anyway personally is it's better to be safe than sorry, right? Yes. So right. if you're yeah, doing if that. If you have symptoms serious enough where you think you, you would be hospitalized, go to the hospital. Call first so they can expect you. Mm -hmm. But to go to the hospital. If you're having mild symptoms, don't go to the hospital because they're just going to send you home and you'll just be sick again and have a big bill to pay. Uh, if it's an emergency, God forbid, then chest yes. pain, severe headaches, you got to call 911. But if you feel like, okay, you're experiencing cough, chill, fever, call us. Yes. You don't need to go. Emergency is packed. All the hospitals are packed. There is no bed in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So call us. We will evaluate you. And if we feel like you need to go to the hospital, then we call the 911 or we will transfer you to the hospital. Gotcha. To make life yes. easy for them. Yes. Yes. And to help our paramedics, to help our emergency physicians, to take the load of emergency physicians because they're bombarded. The hospital beds nationwide are full. So there are cases that not necessarily need to uh, be panicked and stay home rather than occupying a bed of a hospital when somebody really needed. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Good, good uh, even this is happening, still people are still breaking bones, people are still having heart attacks. Right. Yeah. So right. save it uh, for them. Other as things best going can. on. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of talk about a test for this virus. Uh, are those oh, tests the test. available? Or? <laughs> it is available, actually. The coronavirus test is available. Oh, all is the, available all the, yeah, all okay. the local. Uh, what, were, what the CDC was recommending, and then they were giving free kit test to emergency room or hospitals and some urgent cares that they were close to the large cities. But the test is available through a sputum test or nasal swab. The sputum is more accurate. It's just we can get the result back within 24 hours and then see if they are contained with flu or any type of pneumonia or, or God forbid, coronavirus. So it takes about 24 hours 24 to get, hours that, to get the test result know. back, yes. So if somebody's sitting at home and they're wondering if they, they do have it, I get... I guess there's no facility that you can just go and get tested. You do have to see a medical professional. We do. We will take the cup with us. We will take the kit with us. We will do it. We get a sputum sample and we send it to our local labs and we will have the test result next day. We'll call the patient and we'll discuss it with them. If it's an emer if it is a contain a coronavirus, then we will, as he mentioned, our hospital is preparing or prepared for isolation or quarantine, those people need to be quarantined. I know as of yesterday, I heard that uh, the only hospital was really equipped with a large facility of quarantine was Honor Health, mm -hmm. but I'm sure Banner and um, Dignity and Yavapai, they're all working to get prepared or they already have it as of this, as of this moment that we're speaking. That's great to know, doctor, because again, a lot of people on the Facebook and the internet have been asking and inquiring about those tests. And I think that's become a large issue, Stephen. Yes, it's, I, it's even been with your reaction, a I lot can of see confusion that. the past few days. And the doctor has answered it. You know, all you have to do is make that phone call yes. and you would be yep. able to get that test. So great news for, for the community. So, how is the hospital prepared, Stephen, if this, God forbid, started becoming more and more people started showing mm -hmm. up with uh, positive for uh, COVID-19. 
are we prepared and what emergency steps have we taken as far as county health? We're prepared. Uh, we've been ready for this for 18 years, really. And we did a lot of work, especially with the swine flu back in 2009. So we have very detailed plans on what we need to do. But of course, like anything else, you know, underfunding, understaffed, undersupplied, we're just gonna run out of things. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to do, is not necessarily eliminate it. If it hits, is to kind of suppress it a little to kind of space it out so the hospitals don't get overwhelmed. Yeah, and the personnel would be one of the uh, questions I would have. Yes. Do we have the personnel, do we have the equipment if somebody needs to go on a ventilator, you know, or, or something like that on a serious case? Do we, are we prepared for that? Yeah, it, they, uh, stuff like ventilators, um, they can only handle so many people. So they'll triage people, so the people that really need it will get the vents and they'll do it. I can't guarantee that there won't be deaths. Um, this is something that's about 2% of the population uh, are expect, 2% uh, of uh, the population are expected to die. We're seeing you know, really bad if you're following Italy. They're seeing a lot of deaths of their seniors, and you just run out of supplies, and you try to do the best you can. You're it is it is a tragedy. I was talking to one of my uh, greatest doctor friend back in Iran, in the state of Kerman. There were about four thousand people were dead. I'm sure they're not releasing this news, including eight physicians. So it is a tragedy. Our best choice, our best. Uh, tool is to stay home and pray to God that it doesn't hit us hard. And uh, to me, again, staying home is the key. For two weeks, even if you don't exercise, just walk inside the house, go around the house, but the, avoid uh, areas where there is a huge population or there is uh, gathering. So I would really avoid going to a high density population. And then this way, even if one or two cases are there, we would not spread it too fast. So. Interesting you say that, doctor, because I was we were talking earlier um, for us who go to the gym. So you wouldn't recommend even taking a walk around the the yard uh, around the block or anything like that to get our exercise. We do it within the confines of our own home. Uh, you can go outside, but it's the most important thing is to s s keep space between you and uh, other people. So yes. if you're walking down one side of the street, make sure everyone's on the other side of the street. The other things, avoid hugging, avoid kissing, yes. avoid shaking hands, wash your hands frequently. Those are uh, a, a huge matter that we could prevent I think spreading that was, it out. That's something I saw on TV yesterday they were talking about the sanitizers and the yes. wipes and everything. Yes. They said the most effective thing that we can do is wash our hands. That's right. it. Sanitizer never ever been scientifically proved that would do anything for any type of viruses or bacterial infection. It's just they market it nicely to sell it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just gotcha. wash hand with soap yeah. or just wash your hand. Yeah. Simple. Right. Yeah, you want to use... It. The best is using soap, mm -hmm. but the real important thing is you use a lot of friction. You want to rub your hands 30 seconds and really rub it because that's what yep. loosens everything up. The soap is really there to help with the friction and to break down the oils in your hand. Mm -hmm. So you're catching more things. I was watching one of the doctor shows the other day and they were showing the fingertips, you know, in your palm. Yes. Some, you know, to make sure that you get your whole hand and not just your fingers. So... Uh, that was interesting. Um, so we need to go get gasoline. We are using, we're touching the pumps and that kind of stuff. Would it be, do we want to put sanitizer on right away afterwards? I would wear gloves. Wear a glove. I would wear a pair of gloves. Yeah. Plastic gloves. As type. long as there's a barrier. Yeah. You, don't have to, you don't have to clean off the handle as long as you're not coming into contact with it. So, yeah. So I went over to, and I, I believe me, I... I I am very cautious, personally. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to stop living, but I don't want to expose myself either. So I went over to Harbor Freight and bought a box of the nitro gloves, you know, so that if I do need to go out and do gas pumping or anything like that, I have a throwaway glove that I can do that. Would that be something yep. you yeah. guys would recommend? Yeah, in a Absolutely. gym, you could use a paper towel. You know, they have the towels there. You can take that, wrap that around the handle. 
as long as there's some kind of barrier, you're protecting yourself. And Harbor Freight just got a commercial from me, so you know. <laughs> 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 They might, they might want to make sure that my card is, you know, working real well there. But, yeah, great great information. Again, preventative measures that we yeah. do. Is there any other preventative measures that you guys can come up with that, you know, that I haven't asked as far as the gloves, the washing our hands, um, not touching our face, obviously? Uh, anything else that? Uh, cleaning surfaces. That's uh, a great one, yeah. Yeah, because um, when you sneeze, it's... it's uh, Transmitted by micro droplets. It's not an airborne one where it stays up in the air for hours like measles is. It'll go out, then fall on your surfaces. And it can stay alive. They're estimating about eight days. Uh, eight last days I life on a, yes. on a surface? Yeah, so you want to wipe down the surface with uh, an antibacterial, antiviral uh, sanitizer. Uh, and it'll stay right on the bottle like Lysol. And the important thing is, is not to wipe it. Let it air dry. The longer it stays wet, the longer it stays active, the more virus it'll kill. I think that's a lot of misconception is where they spray and then they just wipe it off and yeah. dry it. It doesn't, Lysol does not work that fast. Yes. You know, Clorox bleach and the, all these wipes, you have to allow it to sit exactly. and air dry. So that's an If you're washing point. windows, yes, you wipe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tables, no. Yeah, gotcha. Wow, so I, uh, so how long can you, I guess that just answered my question. One of, one of the questions I had is how long can it live outside of the body? Uh, eight days is what you're telling me? On diff it's, it's different yeah. for different surfaces. Uh, hard surfaces, it can live up, up days for soft surfaces like clothes, um, paper. It will live less on certain metals. It'll learn, it'll live even shorter. Mm -hmm. ah, I'm getting dull tongue tied. It'll leave even shorter because some metals have antibiotic properties, like copper, so it won't last as long on that. Uh, you, know, you, guys, you guys are giving me, I'm like, holy moly. No, I mean, <laughs> no I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure the vaccine is already produced. Vaccine is ready. I was talking to some officials. They said the vaccine is ready. We just need to get FDA approved. Uh, generally, FDA approved for any type of medicine or vaccination, it takes from one year to 10 years to nine to 10 years, but they're pushing, President yes. Trump is pushing this to go, to go through very fast. So I expect within the next couple of weeks, we will have vaccination for children and adults. With God willing. Now, Roche Pharmaceuticals actually announced this morning that they have produced kids, more kids, millions of kids coming in to do more testing as they were comparing us to the rest of the world. We have not been doing a lot of tests. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, it is misinformed that testing is available. It's a sputum test. It doesn't need to be a kit. Mm -hmm. So now there are more kids coming. It's, that's a good news. The sputum test is good. The nasal swab test is good. At least we can identify those people and avoid further tragedy. Right. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And for those that are thinking, you know, why can't we just speed it through uh, testing? Uh, the older population may remember thalidomide. And that was marketed to women for um, uh, uh, morning sickness. Mm -hmm. And in Europe, they rushed it, and the, um, it caused deformed More babies. Damage. You have to let you know, yep. make yes. sure that it's safe for everybody. Exactly. Yes. So you know, that's young, old, that's what between. the testing is for. So gotcha. they're rushing it as fast as they can, but there's certain things always have to be checked off. Doctor, one of the questions that were out was, or one of the questions that was asked was, um, can we wait a couple months and, and just the, the, our environment getting warmer and drier? Will that affect this virus or and start killing it off? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of uh, the things that we're waiting. But before that, I think we will come with the vaccine. We cannot let the world uh, get uh, so many million people get killed mm -hmm. and not FDA approving the vaccination to be released to the market. I have a feeling that they're going to release it soon. And let's pray to God that they would do that to avoid waiting for a few more months of warm weather. 
Will this reoccur next year during flu season, do you believe, or do you think we'll have a handle on that? I mean, I know I'm asking you to look into the crystal ball, but your belief as a doctor, do you think that we will have that under control or have some kind of handle on it by next year? I think so, 100%, yes. Good. So uh, one of the th another question I had was, when you, if you contact this and you recover, are you susceptible of getting it again? Will it, can it reoccur? Technically, uh, you won't be, you'll get immunity from the strain that you're infected with. It'll work like flu. The father, there'll be, there's different strains. They've already identified two different strains of the, the COVID-19. So it's not known how much protection getting sick from the first one will protect you from the second. So yes. that, that was another one of my questions is how many strains are out there? Jan sent me an email this morning saying, Ask how many strains, you know. We hear two. Are there more or? There's two identified. Two identified. Yeah. Two identified. yeah. The, the, sad, the sad part would be, this is what we call it in a, in a, in a different uh, term, biological warfare. Mm -hmm. I hope that's not the case scenario. I hope it was just a mistake. One virus went out and then... The Chinese guys got it, and then it spread it out, and then the guy went to Iran, and then to Korea, and then to Italy now, and then now it's pandemic. Right. I hope there is no more problem or more viruses coming up. Yeah, so, there was a lot of lot of things going on when that first came out that, you know, um, again, we've heard the saying that it's a bioweapon, that it was weaponized, yeah. and how it uh, mutates and morphs every so many days and would cause somebody to be always chasing a serum or something to, but that has that been, I don't yeah, think, the, those the, are all the, the, conspiracy theories from what I understand, but I don't well, know the mutation, how true. Well, uh, the mutation is natural. It does uh, mutate a lot. It's because it's a, um, what's known as an RNA virus. You know, you think of DNA. Mm -hmm. RNA is kind of like half a strand, and it mutates very quickly. And that, same thing with flu. So there's two known strains. Um, there's probably loads of unknown strains. Some of them lead nowhere. Some may be more lethal. Some may be less lethal. Uh, Some might not even affect people at all. Um, with SARS, that's that's what happened. Is we caught it. It didn't mu it mutate into something yeah. that yeah. became not a problem. So, um, just to relieve the folks that might be watching this, um, we have two possible cases here in Yavapai County nope. that are being tested. Okay. Nope. We have no Update. cases, and we have no active uh, cases being tested. And there's not been anybody sent to in other regions to be tested because that again I'm reading all these little tidbits on Facebook. They're going, oh, they're sending them down to Phoenix. That's not happening. No, you confirm that. No, uh, we get notified of residents. Right. So wherever they sh go, you know, if uh, they go down to Yuma, we'll still be notified. Gotcha. And if there was one that was to, or if there was a confirmed case, obviously that would be. Uh, a public knowledge as well. Yes. yes. Yeah. So. so if you're wondering if there are any cases, go to the health department website first. Uh, go to the health department website first. You can edit that part out. Yeah. Um, and it'll say right on there if it says we have one case, it'll it'll be there. If you don't see anything, we have no cases. We're gonna report it to the official and then put them on quarantine. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Let's go to the source. Exactly. Not, don't go to yes. Facebook, you guys. <laughs> you know. Let's go to let's go to yes. the source. Because there's a lot of information or disinformation. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to put patient yeah. privacy and HIPAA violation. You right. want to just get to the CDC and then they know where to go from there. Good point. Is You're reporting re ma mandatory? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. What oh. happens is if they're tested by the state, you know, obviously it's going to get reported. The private labs automatically report as soon as they put the positive case in their computer. The computer notifies our computers. Gotcha. So, Dr. Ascari, who would be high risk? High-risk patients are uh, people who are what we call immunocompromised, people who are on chemotherapy, cancer patient, uh, MS patient, a patient on radiation therapy, uh, diabetes patient. Um, those are mainly the, the high-risk patient. Patient with, uh, uh, with end-stage COPD, mm -hmm. those are what we call immunocompromised patients. So those people need to be watched very, very carefully. 
Stay and yeah. also people above age 85 plus their immunity system naturally goes down. So those are the people who are at high risk patients. So also babies, hmm. babies, infants. Their so immunity the very system, young and the yes. very in a, and more yeah. elderly. Up to two years or one and a half to two years, their immunity system is not built as strong as adults. I got you. And elderly and the rest of what we said. Good, good, good advice. Anything to add on that, Stephen? Uh, that was pretty much covered it. You know, yeah. And I think uh, it's important to say if, if you do get COVID-19 and you have mild symptoms, don't immediately assume everyone else is going to have mild symptoms too. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's really a roulette wheel. The symptoms you get, one person can get mild symptoms, one person can have severe symptoms, and otherwise you're totally the same. And the people who are high risk, there are opportunities for like, if you do need services like food or something, there's home delivery where they can come and deliver, deliver your groceries right there at home. Um, you know, basically put it out on your doorstep so you can pick it up afterwards, you know. Exactly. Um, so there are options out there within our community to, again, uh, uh, hold back from that exposure uh, to everybody who might, you know, uh, be at high risk. Yes. You know, there are two companies in this town that I have such a high respect for them. It's uh, Meals on Wheels. They could deliver some food for those people. Mm -hmm. And also people who care. If they need to be transferred to somewhere, to a hospital, or they're, they're really sick, um, they could use those people. Because we don't have Uber and taxi services as many as the other big cities have. So reach out to those people and then I'm sure they're available to help you out. You know, and you hit something very uh, dear to my heart and that's about Prescott and the people that live in Prescott. Yeah. You know, um, if we have a neighbor who is sick or needs our help, I think the majority of us, if not all of us, will always be there to help our neighbors. Exactly, uh, yes. The, the people of Prescott are beyond compared to so many other big cities, you know. we. Uh, we watch out for ourselves. I know even when a snowstorm happens, I go around with my Jeep and make sure my neighbors are able to get out of their driveway <laughs> if they need to. And, and the same thing here. It's not that I want to, you know, give that exposure, but, you know, if I have a neighbor that I know is sick or elderly and can't get out, or maybe a, one of the high risk people that you spoke of, doctor, you bet I'm gonna call them up and say, you know, what do you need at the grocery store? Let me go shopping for you yes. and get that to them. So there's, there's, there's so many different ways of serving you know, our community. Um, I'm sure you all know Pat Kirkender. Pa Pat is amazing and he knows, he has so much connection with veterans yeah. that, that they c could come and help. So don't, recognize, don't forget about him. He's a great guy. He, he's such a big help to every function and event I had uh, for in my house for fundraising for firefighters. These guys were amazing. So yeah. Yeah. reach out to each other and get help and move on in work. any direction we need to. Do. Work as a community. You know, I just I just received an email from Heights Church. I go to Heights yes. and you know they're going to do the services online mm -hmm. so that you know it, 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 that we're not exposed to each other within our uh, in our services. So these are the kind of things that we're working smart. You know, we're exactly. doing things the right way, uh, staying away from large crowds. And we're still living, you know, we're still going to, I'm still going to get to see Pastor John this Sunday. I just, I'm going to do it inside my house in my living room. That's all. Yeah, it's so, kind of the paradox of the disease is that you want to stay away from people, but you need those people to help you. Yeah, great point. <clears throat> and I'm sure Mayor Mangrelli, Scott Masher, uh, Chief uh, Black. Black, all of these people are available with their, with their team of uh, support, so... We can always reach to them. They're, they've been always supportive, and mm -hmm. uh, we as a community need to protect our residents. And with the God willing, we will prevail. All right. And our small business, again, we don't want to uh, uh, shut down our small business because of exactly. this. Right now, uh, if you're not able to you know, uh, support small business going out, maybe buy a gift card sooner or later and so that we can do that, so they can you know, keep that cash flow going. Because exactly. We certainly don't want to lose our small business. That's that's the lifeblood of our community, especially here in uh, in tourist working, town, yeah. because yes. it, it's going to be affected, and we all know that. So let's support our community any way that we can, and, Amen. Uh, both both uh, by service and economically as well. 
My last question I have here do, um, from somebody, again, this was Jan. Do masks help? People who I see walking around with masks on in public, does that help? Not in Yavapai County to me because we haven't had any cases. So um, people are in a panic mode. Even if we don't tell them, hey, don't wear the mask, they're still going to wear it. It's, uh, to me, it is not. Unless if we see, okay, there were a pandemic area, there, there was this city, there was a, a place in New York, there were 40 cases identified this morning on news, I saw that. Yes, in that area, yes. But in Yavapai County, where we have zero cases uh, reported, there is, I don't see there is a necessity of wearing a mask. Right. And once it starts going, I, I, the mask doesn't protect you very well from it. But if you have it, it'll protect other people. Gotcha. So if I'm wearing a mask, I'm, I can still get sick, but you two are protected. If you two are wearing masks, I'm protected. So you're protecting other people. So if everyone wears masks, mm -hmm. then you're helping everyone stay healthy. So just to kind of sum this up, Doctor and, and Stephen, again, thank you again for oh, coming on oh, and, and, and getting this information out. Uh, the way I see it right now is we have no cases in Yavapai County. Correct. But that does not mean that we should not be vigilant and that we should take precaution. Absolutely. And that we, that we, that we, we stay healthy within our own homes. We uh, reduce the risk by not going out, uh, get some supplies at, at home, some food mm -hmm. that where you don't have to go out to the store every day. Um, and um, just uh, be smart about yes. where you're going, what your exposure is, wash your hands, use your hygiene, your good hygiene. And who knows, we might not even have a less flu season next year if we keep on washing our hands and doing the exactly. things that we were supposed to be doing all along. Yeah, take this time now yeah. to prepare. And by the time it does arrive, we're pretty much considering yeah. that it's inevitable. So prepare Doc, so uh, everything, by the time it hits, everything has become habit. We, I have one more suggestion. Yeah. We, we're going to be extremely cautious for people coming from uh, out of the state or out of the country. Mm -hmm. So Chancellor of Embry-Riddell University called me two days ago that there, some of their students coming on Saturday or Sunday morning, and would you be willing to come and help us to screen because our clinic is closed, we said yes, so we prepared about six of our medical assistants go and then do a screening testing for students who were abroad or they were out of state, they're coming here. So entire sat Sunday evening and uh, the entire Monday morning, Monday we're going to do the entire screening for the, for the Embry-Riddle students. Right. And then if any other institution that I'm not aware that they have People coming out of the state or people are coming from uh, uh, within the states, we're going to be cautious with those and ask them or if you identify some of those guys, they, they need to be screened. They need to be tested. How about people who are coming back from, let's say, a cruise or being over? They Absolutely. Should, they should self-quarantine yes. for 14 days? Is that? I wouldn't do self-quarantine. If they have symptoms, they should be tested. If they uh, have no symptoms, they should stay home for at least 14 days, yes. Good, good advice. Yeah, and if it's a long time, if it's a long-term cruise, three weeks, four weeks, the first case would have shown up by right. the time. That's what happened with the quarantined cruise ships. So even if you have like a three-day cruise, four-day cruise, you should still be aware of the symptoms, watch out for them, and quarantine yourself as best you can. Final words, doctor. Let's pray to God. God bless us and stay home and keep praying. Yeah. Stephen? Wash your hands. Don't panic. Don't panic. Great. Well, thank you very much for taking the time. I hope you found this to be informational. Um, again, there's, we're trying to uh, get as much information out to our public as possible. I want to say thank you again to Dr. Ascari for taking his time today to come down and meet us here. And Stephen, again, you. And uh, this is the way we do it now, right, guys? That's, yes. <laughs> thank you. Guys. And don't forget about, repeat our numbers, 1-800-1855. Numbers, call us. 
If you're sick, if you're not feeling good, call us. We come to you rather you guys come to us. And we'll have that up on our screen as yes. We, yes. when we show this. So, again, guys, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. And thank, thank you, you Prescott. Thank you.